Hey Apple fans, Apple Sheep, and anyone else out there watching, Richard here once again with iTalk, and it is dub dub time. The rumor mills are swirling, the gossip abounds, and we're bringing you WWDC 21, our preview, and it's coming up right after the intro. What we need now is the third industry milestone product. We shall prevail. On January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. It is insanely great. And we are introducing a product today, and that product is called iPod. We are going to begin the transition from the Power PC to Intel processors, an iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. Are you getting it? This is one device, and we are calling it iPhone. If there's going to be a third category of device, it's going to have to be better at these kinds of tasks. But we think we've got something that is. And we call it the iPad. I am so excited, and I am so proud to share it with you this morning. It is Apple Watch. Today is going to be a truly historic day for the Mac, because today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. All right, welcome back everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little retrospective of Apple's big announcements. Not all those were from WWDC. Obviously some were from special keynotes uh, and special events, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little retrospective at some of Apple's biggest announcements. Um, through the years. Apple recently released its schedule for DubDub and the keynote is slated for June 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. on the East Coast. And it's all virtual again this year, um, so no live audience. Um, the State of the Union is at 2 o'clock Pacific time and then the Apple Design Awards are June 10th at 2 o'clock Pacific time. Um, and then they have access to experts, special events, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, pavilions. Um, but most of us really care about the keynote. So what do we expect? I said rumors abound and, and the gossip is swirling, except Apple has really actually done a pretty good job of keeping a lot of this stuff under wraps. So we really don't have a lot of uh, rumors about specifics. We know that um, there's going to be big software announcements with iOS 15, iPad OS 15, uh, Watch OS 8. And so this year, WWDC 21 um, is expected to be really a big year for Apple. Um, not just software, but hardware with last year's announcement of the transition from Intel to Apple Silicon. Um, we've already seen uh, a couple of uh, Macs uh, get Apple Silicon, along with now the new 2021 iPad Pro now with the M1. Um, but let's go ahead. Um, we're going to see, obviously, a lot of big software updates with iOS 15. Uh, Mac OS 12 or whatever they're going to call it this year, um, iPad OS 15, Watch OS 8, um, and I think those are going to be the big software update announcements. Okay, let's first talk about iOS 15. So iOS 15 is almost assuredly going to be announced at DubDub this year and will probably be released in the fall with the uh, iPhone 13. So one of the big new features uh, that is rumored uh, through Mark Gurman in this Bloomberg report are new notification features and new notification preferences. 
So the notification preferences will have a new menu that allows the user to select whether um, you're sleeping, driving, uh, working, or you can even uh, supposedly customize your preferences, which is gonna be really cool because right now the only thing you have is driving or not driving. So I think this is gonna really be a good feature for uh, I think this is going to be a really cool feature for iOS 15. Well, how's it going? No, you're sleeping by your Apple Watch, maybe? I don't know. It doesn't say. There's, I don't know. I mean, that, your guess is as good as anybody else's. Oh. But yeah, it could certainly work with the Apple Watch if somebody has an Apple Watch. One other rumor, one other leak um, from Mark Gurman is um, along with the notification enhancement. Supposedly, there will also be an option to set automatic replies um, depending on status. Right now, the only automatic replies that iOS does are when you're driving. So you think they'll do it like if you're in a meeting, you set it that way? Yeah, probably, probably the same way as the um, notifications. You can set automatic replies. Looks like... Uh, I would think you can set automatic replies to um, if you're working, if you're sleeping, um, if you're on vacation, because uh, um, it's supposed to be customizable. So a couple more quick rumors for iOS 15. Um, supposedly they're going to make widgets more interactive, which is, uh, if true, if they do, is really welcome, um, because really widgets are not very interactive right now. They just kind of sit there and you can look at them. Um, but that is one of, one of the other rumors, is more interactive widgets. And iMessages is supposedly going to be shifted um, and getting upgraded to look, um, to be more functional, uh, sort of like a social media platform like WhatsApp. Um, and that seems to be Apple's long-term goal for iMessages is to make it uh, more of a social media platform. iOS 15 compatibility. Um, looks like it's gonna go back to um, iPhone 7 Plus and the iPod Touch 7th generation. Um, looks like it's gonna drop support for the 2016 iPhone SE, the iPhone 6S, and the iPhone 6S Plus. Um, so basically back to the iPhone 7 Plus, and we're gonna list the compatibility right here. And that is really just about it for the leaks on iOS 15. So uh, anything else is uh, your guess is as good as mine. Now, there are some things that I would like to see, um, especially surrounding Siri, <laughs> because <laughs> I've read some people say, Siri is pretty good now. That's debatable. Um, Siri is, I think, okay now. Um, and Siri has come a long way, but it has a lot longer way to go. Half the time, you know, I call out to Siri. What I ask for, Siri just doesn't seem to understand, and I find myself going, that's not what I asked you. So we, we really need still some significant improvements to, um, to Siri in iOS and iPadOS and, and on the Mac. But, um, but uh, yeah, Siri still needs uh, some work. But, uh, you know, other than that, um, I'm excited for the new features in iOS 15, whatever they may be. And if you're having any issues with Siri um, or any other issues with iOS 15, you know, or any of the other software that we're going to talk about, go ahead and drop a comment. I'd love to hear your stories and your frustrations. Um, even though most of us Apple sheep, we love Apple and um, we're kind of loyal to Apple, but Apple is not without issues. So iPad OS 15, what do we know about it? Well, actually very little because there haven't been very many leaks. It's probably gonna be very similar to iOS 15 um, with some tweaks and modifications 
and some apps that are specific to the tablet, to the iPad. So iPad OS 15 compatibility. Uh, looks like it's gonna go back to iPad 2017 and we'll have a full list right here. So beyond that, we'll just have to wait and see what happens at WW21. Moving on to Watch OS 8. Um, there don't seem to be a lot of rumors or leaks out there about that uh, either. But one thing um, people had been calling for forever since the Apple Watch came out was uh, better sleep tracking. Watch OS 7 finally brought a sleep tracking feature to um, the Apple Watch, but it's inadequate to say the least. So um, one thing that would be nice is a native uh, app on Watch OS 8 to allow for better sleep tracking to track um, light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep. Another thing that would be nice and I'd like to see is a better watch app store. I mean, iOS and iPad, the app stores for the iPhone and the iPad are phenomenal, but there's just the an app store for the watch, for the Apple Watch is really very limited. Um, so, you know, so the Apple Watch has become probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular uh, watches in the world. And so we really need a much better um, app store and apps for the Apple Watch. Now, the Apple Watch, the new Apple Watch, obviously, I don't think is coming at WWDC, but I did read a rumor about the new Apple Watch itself. Um, that may be able to do blood glucose monitoring. And, you know, for a physician um, and someone who's diabetic myself, um, man, that's, that, that would be really super exciting. If I could just monitor uh, my blood glucose on my Apple Watch, that would make life so much easier for millions of people. Okay, that's it for uh, Watch OS 8. Um, one thing that I'm really looking forward to, um, and I saved this for last for the software, um, is new accessibility options across the entire platform for Apple. Um, uh, iOS 15, iPadOS 15, watchOS 8. And one of the big ones is background sounds. Um, Apple is, uh, is really trying to um, support neurodiversity. And for people with um, mental health issues, with um, sensory issues, um, these background sounds can really help. And, and uh, rumor has it that they're designed to help people uh, stay focused, stay relaxed. And uh, you know, I have a fairly uh, large population of uh, kids that I treat for ADHD, and this could really be uh, come in handy for them. You know, it can, and for people with autism, um, a lot of a lot of people with autism also have significant sensory issues. So this could be really helpful for um, both of these populations and um, um, a lot of other people with uh, neurodevelopmental issues. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, another one is assistive touch, and this is for uh, users with limited mobility. Um, assistive touch allows users to use the Apple Watch without actually having to touch the display or controls. Um, that's really cool. So um, built-in motion sensors, um, optical heart rate sensor, on-device machine learning will let Apple Watch detect subtle differences in muscle movement and tendon activity that will control a cursor on the screen through hand gestures like a pinch or a clinch. Um, so you don't actually have to touch the Apple Watch. You can just control it with, with subtle movements. So that's really cool. And yeah. that's great for people with uh, limited mobility. Um, iPad, um, eye tracking. Um, rumor has it that iPad will support third party eye tracking devices to let people control their iPad with their eyes. New Memoji customizations um, to um, better represent um, users 
with uh, that have oxygen that have to carry oxygen tubes. So they'll that'll include um, in the Memojis um, cochlear implants, soft helmet. Um, so that's really cool. Um, also, M5 hearing aid improvements. Apple is introducing uh, new support for bidirectional hearing aids, um, enabling hands-free phone and FaceTime conversations. And next generation models from M5 partners are coming uh, later this year, according to some rumors. Um, a few other accessibility improvements, um, new hearing aid improvements, uh, M5 hearing aid improvements, um, audiograms for headphone accommodations, sound actions for switch control, which enables uh, users to replace physical buttons and switches with mouth sounds. Uh, so that's really uh, exciting uh, for people with limited mobility. And the last one, display and text size setting will be customizable on a per app basis for users who are colorblind or with other visual impairments. Uh, so that's it for software. Let's talk about potential hardware announcements at uh, WWDC 21. Um, don't expect a lot, like I said. Um, I would expect, and from what I've been reading and gathering, is that the um, new MacBook Pros, the larger ones, the 14-inch and the 16-inch, uh, will be announced at DubDub this year. The only other possibility for hardware upgrade um, to be announced at DubDub is the Mac Mini. Um, don't expect larger iMacs, don't expect the Mac Pro to be announced yet. That will probably be for the larger iMacs at least fall of this year, if not early next year. And for the Mac Pro, um, probably mid to late next year. Um, but as far as the MacBook Pro, the 14 and 16 inch uh, are concerned, rumor has it that they're gonna be completely redesigned and look more iPad-like. Um, they're going to come with uh, 10 core processors with eight high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. So as far as upgradability, um, rumor has it that you can either pick from a 16 gig GPU or a 32 gig GPU. I haven't seen much on RAM, but I probably wouldn't expect more than 32 or 64 gigs and probably start with uh, 16 gigs and maybe upgradable to 32 or 64 gigs on the on the RAM. The um, CPU, I don't think they're going to be upgradable at all. I think they're going to be 10 core with eight high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. Although I would like to see them upgradable to 12 or 14, but I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for WWDC 21, our preview. Uh, so if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss an iTalk video. I'm Richard. This is iTalk. We're out.